Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, joining us for uh, this new uh, webinar about Gatling. Today's webinar topic is uh, will be about uh, configuring frontline uh, to be plugged into your continuous your continuous integration pipeline. Uh, so, uh, uh, first, uh, a, a quick reminder about the previous episodes uh, of our webinars. Uh, so, uh, the all the previous webinars are available from our website. Uh, so, really, if, uh, uh, if you're looking for information that that was covered in the previous topics uh, in the previous webinars. Ray, uh, please have a look at them, um, and we hope you you like them too. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to uh, talk about continuous integration. So first, uh, uh, well, the, the first question: Why should you be interested in plugging the uh, testing uh, into uh, your continuous integration uh, pipe? Um, and then how we'll cover how we can we can help with uh, with frontline. So so first yeah question. Uh, uh, it's it's a bit new that people are trying to integrate load testing into your, uh, into their continuous continuous integration. Uh, the first people went with a unit test, uh, a compilation unit test, and then integration tests like uh, things like Selenium. And I would dare say that. Uh, load testing is the newcomer in this uh, in this space. Uh, the thing is that uh, load tests are just tests, uh, and test values reside in them being able to provide quick feedback. Uh, so if you if you perform a, ch a change in your application and you just test this change six six months later, uh, the the impact of the of trying to fix it might be but might might be huge. So you really, it might be interesting to uh, to figure out performance regression uh, or validate performance of architecture choices as soon as they happen uh, before it's too late to try to fix them. Um, then, if you you run your test, your load test, uh, and any kind of test, just from time to time, uh, we know that tests rot. Uh, if you don't use them, if you don't maintain them, your application will change. Uh, and um, and if you just try to run the test again, they, they will just not work uh, against the latest version of your application. So uh, what you might be interested in is running what we call smoke tests. Uh, um, smoke tests are just uh, making sure that the load tests are functional uh, with just without load, with just a few virtual users. Uh, so. Uh, if you integrate your load test into your continuous integration pipeline with such low load, you'll be able to check that the that the tests are properly maintained, and that when you'll be ready when you will want to run them at full at full scale. Uh, then uh, load testing is a bit is a bit complex in the sense that it requires orchestration. Uh, you'll have to uh, to deploy your application, of course. Uh, deploy it in a, uh, with, with a, an expected state. Uh, just like any other kind of test, you need uh, test uh, test data and you need expected test, uh, test, test data. Uh, so you'll need to uh, run your application against, uh, uh, for example, a given dump of your uh, SQL database, for example. So you will have to restore uh, to perform a, a database restore. Um, and also, uh, more and more applications have dependencies calling external services, and uh, you'll want to mock those, the, to deploy mocks of those uh, external applications. So you'll have ready to orchestrate deployments, uh, and this is best done uh, from tools such as um, C CI integration tools. Uh, it's not the responsibility of the load test tool to perform all those different all those different uh, or, or, uh, steps and 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 orchestrate everything all together. Um, and all the more as load tests are an iterative process, uh, meaning that uh, you'll you'll run a load test, uh, figure out some performance issues, investigate them. Uh, implement a fix, then you'll want to deploy this fix to validate it. Uh, and 
possibly even if with this fix you still don't meet your uh, performance requirements so you want to uh, keep on investigating keep on uh, uh, figuring out other performance issues and other fixes to to be validated so and you'll iterate over and over again so uh, uh, if you do all these orchestra orchestration all those de deployments manually uh, things will be very uh, very heavy for you uh, so you definitely want to automate these kind of things typically just have to uh, to trigger a container integration job uh, to uh, to deploy and run the test for you uh, so how can frontline help with this uh, so in frontline so what's interesting with frontline is that it's a server uh, so you would delegate uh, lots of things like uh, uh, com bu building the test for you, deploying them on remote machines, possibly spawning uh, instances for you on AWS or another cloud provider, or wherever to host the injectors uh, and collect the stats and archiving them, etc. So that's quite a lot of work that's being uh, done for you in a, in frontline. Then you just have to plug frontline onto your continuous integration pipeline. Uh, so we have plugins for Jenkins, Bamboo, and TeamCity. And actually, so for other CI solutions that don't have uh, plugins, uh, as, uh, we actually provide a REST API. Um, actually, the other plugins are built on top of this public REST API. Uh, so uh, we provide a, bash, uh, a shell script that just does the same logic of uh, calling the API for starting the test and then calling the API to, to, to collect the test results and check, that, check the test, test run uh, status update. So uh, let's have a look how we can do that with Frontline. Uh, so the use case we'll be, uh, we'll be playing with here is, so we have an application uh, that has been already uh, implemented, already packaged as a Docker image. And uh, what we want is have a pipeline that will deploy this Docker image into a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so this is not exactly uh, the Frontline responsibility, but just some, uh, uh, pre-requirements uh, for being able to run the test. Uh, so we'll have Jenkins uh, deploy the Docker image into a Kubernetes cluster and start and start the application and, and the test. Another thing then is so we want also once the deployment is done, we want Jenkins to uh, to to trigger the load test in frontline. And um, and uh, as the the We'll also see how we can uh, collect data. For example, uh, let's, uh, in some cases, you might not have uh, an expected uh, name uh, or uh, IP, uh, ad address for, for the, the system and the load. So we'll be collecting this data and passing it to, uh, to the, the, Gatling, uh, the Gatling test uh, so it can figure out uh, the, the URL of the system and the load. And, uh, and then we'll tear down the, the, the application and the load once the test is done. So how can we do that? So the first thing is, so we, uh, I have already configured uh, this, uh, this simulation in, um, in, in Frontline. So I have already configured uh, the, the Kubernetes uh, cluster that will be used to deploy the, the injectors. Uh, I have already uh, deployed the repository uh, that will be used to uh, to download uh, the the Gatling test from, and I have already configured uh, the the simulation. So the simulation uh, will be um, it's the same kind of uh, it, um, the the application the load uh, will be uh, an instance of the the computer database application that we that we are using in our uh, in 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 the tutorials in our official documentation. Um, and uh, so we'll be building the application, uh, cloning from this uh, this Git repository, uh, and building it with Maven. And we'll be deploying injector, uh, a single injector, into our Kubernetes cluster, uh, which is hosted on Google Cloud. Uh, so there, so. I, First thing, uh, so you'll have to deploy uh, to you'll have to de to install uh, the the Jenkins plugin. So you can download it from here. You can see that I clicked on the on the plugin plugin list here. You can see the puzzle icon. So I clicked in here, 
and I downloaded the, the Jenkins plugin that I then installed uh, for Frontline, that then, then installed into my front, uh, Jenkins instance. Uh, the other thing that I have to do is, uh, so the plugin uh, will be using our public REST API. This public REST API is protected by API tokens. So I need to create an API token uh, that will be used to, uh, to, to get access to the, to, to, to the REST API. So, uh, so yeah, it's very easy to, uh, to to create an API token. Just uh, give it a name and and grant the per select the permissions that you want to grant, uh, and then uh, just copy it. So now, so now we're we're done on the on the front line side. Uh, then um, also, what we're going to do is uh, so there are different ways to 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 build uh, Jenkins job in, uh, jobs in Jenkins. What we'll be using here is um, uh, we want to um, uh, we'll be using a gen, uh, um, a job uh, with a the pipeline style. Uh, so we have created a Jenkins file uh, that uh, that will have those different steps. So first uh, configuring the environment. Uh, deploying the, uh, the the application, so uh, this will be um, uh, a Docker image uh, deployed into our, uh, our Kubernetes cluster, um, and then we'll have the actual load test step. Uh, so this, uh, so you'll be able to use this step, this kind of step, once you've configured the um, the Jenkins plugin for for Frontline. You're passing, you'll be passing uh, the the simulation, uh, the ID of the simu the unique ID of the simulation. You can you can grab this unique simulation ID from from here. Yeah, I mean, we'll be copying it into uh, uh, on the, clip the clipboard. So this way, um, you're t you when you'll trigger this test, you'll be telling Frontline to trigger this specific test. And also, we'll be passing some additional system properties. So, and those system properties will be uh, propagated to uh, the um, uh, to, to the the injectors instances, uh, just like other system properties that you can configure on your simulation. Uh, let's have a look again. When you configure a simulation in uh, in Frontline, you can configure system properties in here. So all the, the additional system properties that you will, that you would pass from the CI plugins or from the REST API uh, will be uh, added dynamically to this list, and those system properties will be propagated to the injectors. So you can use that to pass any kind of external configuration from Jenkins onto your uh, your your deployed simulations. Uh, and then we're tearing down. Uh, once the test is done, we're tearing down the the system, uh, the system and the load. Um, so now we're in, in, now in Jenkins. Uh, so let's. Uh, so assuming we're already already in, installed the 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 frontline uh, plugin, we'll go. Uh, so we need we need to configure the token. Uh, so we've created a secret. Uh, that uh, stored in, in Jenkins to um, uh, to to store uh, the API token that will be required on the server side. So we'll go into uh, managing Jenkins, configuring the system, and uh, where is it? Here it is. Yeah. So here is our API token. So so it's a uh, it's a, uh, a secret, and uh, so if you configure uh, frontline, uh, sorry, if you configure the API token for frontline in here, you'll be configuring. Uh, this is really the global configuration. So you'll be configuring the API token for the for the whole platform. Uh, this is fine if you want to um, uh, if you want to uh, to to. If you don't, if you don't plan to share the frontline instance amongst multiple teams, uh, where you really want to make sure that people from the different teams that will be using uh, different different jobs in, Gen, in Jenkins, uh, don't uh, you don't want them to use a global uh, global token that has access to everything. So uh, you also have the option of defining the API token per job. Uh, so you can re make sure that. Uh, 
uh, you don't end up using a global token uh, available for, for for everyone that would actually breach the break, break the, the the team's isolation. Uh, so we're configuring the uh, the the API token and we're configuring the address of uh, the uh, of the frontline API. Uh, so this is for it for the global configuration, and then we'll conf we'll create. So we have created um, a, a Jenkins job. job. So it's uh, so it's been created uh, using the pipeline style. Uh, so we will be um, downloading the we'll be configuring the the, the job uh, to to cl to clone a Git repository that contains this uh this Jenkins file and uh so we're giving the uh the the, the url uh of the the git repository the the branch the name of the jenkins file and uh and then we're done we just have to go to uh to to trigger the test so when we'll trigger the test uh so um jenkins will first execute so we'll we'll trigger the job uh, it will clone the repository that contains the jenkins file uh it will execute this jenkins file uh, so first step uh it will set up the environment then it will deploy uh the the system and the load then it will uh call frontline to trigger the test based on this simulation id that's being configured configured here and uh, also using the global uh, API token that we've configured. You can see also that it will, it will be passing some, some system properties that are actually dynamic. Uh, so we are passing in a, in a we'll be resolving uh, these uh, system properties in the simulation to, uh, to resolve the, tar uh, the target the, of the system and the load. And this URL is, is computed based on the name of the pod uh, that will uh, that that is being used to host the uh, the system and the load, and then uh, the the job will will sh uh, will will trash the, uh, the 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 Docker container. So let's give it a try. Uh, and building now. So you can see that test is going. Okay, and you see that the, the the test has been triggered on the frontline side, so you can check the uh, the, the the run logs. So now, okay, all good. So the test is injecting some load against the or system and the load. You can see also that. Uh, All good, and the test is done. And if we go back, oh, sorry, was that the correct one? Ah, okay, it's the job is still continuing because it's tearing down the the, the target environment, and then the, the the job is done, and we we can check the the update, the status of the test. All good. So that's basically it. So as you can see, uh, if you're proficient with uh, with with Jenkins uh, and used to uh, to build pipelines uh, for deploying your uh, system the load, uh, being for for production or for uh, for test environment, it's pretty easy to configure the front line uh, and uh, and automate your your, your load tests. Uh, I think we're good. Uh, thanks a lot for attending this uh, this webinar today. 